Did you know that trees can talk to each other? And it's all due to nature's internet, mycelium. But what is this mysterious mycelium? And how is it related to the mushroom? In this video, let us dispel all myths once and for all. The mushrooms we've all come to know and love are actually the fruiting bodies of fungi. So the mushroom is like the apple. The bulk of the mushroom organism that you can see is actually growing underground, and it's composed of long threads called hyphae. These hyphae grow one cell at a time, and then they branch, growing in every direction that they can, even three-dimensionally, trillions of ends branching. That mass of threads is called mycelium. Think of it like a network or a giant web just growing through the forest, and they actually share the same network design. Like our brain's neural pathways, a mycelium is a network that operates in very much the same way, with electrolytes and electrical pulses. Every tree in the wild is associated with certain species of fungi. The tree forms a friendly relationship with its fungus, where the fungus grows into the root and provides the tree with nutrients and water that the fungus gathers up from the soil. Scientists found that, when they mapped these forests, all the trees were linked together in a single massive network. The trees were communicating using this network of mycelium as pathways. Also known as the mycorrhizal network, they connected one tree to another and to the earth. The scientists also found that one tree can swap nutrients with another tree using mycelium as the passageway. In other words, the trees are using the mycorrhizal network to feed one another. For their services, the mycorrhizal network charges the trees sugar and other products of tree photosynthesis. The trees share up to a third of their total production with fungi. We often think of kin recognition as animal behavior. Humans, you know, we love our babies, we know it's our baby and we're gonna look after that baby. Scientists never thought that plants could do that, but they are finding in research that plants can recognize their kin, just like humans. So these mother trees recognize their kin through their mycorrhizal networks. The mother tree and the baby seedlings are sending signals, talking to each other. When they're connected, and carbon is moving between plants, the strong trees are supporting the weaker ones. If the plant knows that there are pests around and that she's in danger, she will increase her competitive environment toward her babies so that they regenerate further away. It's a magical thing, and could not happen without the fungi. Researchers wanted to find out how these below-ground linkages would affect how trees grow, so they took a deeper dive. They labeled one tree with an isotope and traced it from that tree to its neighbor. They found that carbon molecules were moving from one tree to another tree through these mycorrhizal networks. As they traced, researchers thought there might not only be carbon, but perhaps that other molecules would be involved as well. They started labeling trees with nitrogen, phosphorus and deuterated water. In the end, researchers found that all of these elements moved back and forth between the trees. Thus they gained a rudimentary understanding of the language of trees. They also found that multiple species of trees can be linked together in the mycorrhizal network. Birch trees are linked to other birch trees, and to Douglas firs and hemlocks as well. The network below ground can easily be imagined as a marketplace, where the food is either offered or received by all the trees that are linked together. But what about competition? If all the trees are eating at the same table, then why don't they steal from each other and suck each other dry, in a struggle for the survival of the fittest? Trees of one species are not competitors. On the contrary, they actually support each other almost unconditionally. The weak are supported by the strong. Only together they can, for example, regulate the microclimate and lower the air temperature, because trees love it cool and moist. You could almost call this, tree communism, and it functions perfectly, compared to human communism. Here, the individual is not as important as the community. Trees do care for each other. 
We think of that as an interaction between trees, but they're looking after each other. Mycelium is the oldest multicellular organism on Earth. Mycelium fossils dating back 2.4 billion years old were found in the sediments of lava in South Africa. A mycelium can theoretically live forever as long as it has food to grow into, which is why the oldest and largest organism on Earth is a fungus. This huge and ancient fungus lives on top of a mountain in Oregon. It covers thousands of acres underground and it's thousands of years old. Just to give you an idea of how much fungi and mycelium are in the forest, as you're walking through, there are about 300 miles of fungi, under every footstep that you take. And that's all over the world. It's everywhere, and it is the most common species on Earth. So the next time you're out in nature for a hike, remember, without mycelium, trees wouldn't exist. Neither would we. To learn more about the wonderful world of mushrooms, subscribe to our channel and visit us at mushroomsite.com.